Breaking tonight, President Trump declaring victory on a top campaign promise to defend the nation after the U.S. Supreme Court reaffirmed his power to secure the borders and ban travelers from six terror-rich nations from entering the U.S. That's the story. Good evening. I'm Shannon Bream in for Martha McCallum. The high court allowing key parts of the president's so-called travel ban to go forward and in turn knocking down the opinions from some of the most liberal lower courts in the country. The White House expected to proceed with its plan to temporarily block immigration from these six Middle Eastern countries with a history of terrorism. And just two and a half months into the job, the man that President Trump put on the Supreme Court, Justice Neil Gorsuch, already making his presence felt in a big way arguing he would have gone even further, enforcing the ban in full. Joining me now with his analysis of the day's big story, Judge Andrew Napolitano, Fox News Senior Judicial Analyst. Good to see you again, oh, Judge. Good to be with you, Shannon. We, we were together we this morning. This, I know when this, this broke. We live. We knew just a fraction about it of what we now know. Now we know much more about this and how yes. it really is a win for the administration. Yes. On many points. We know that this was basically a compromise, but, but John Roberts, the Chief Justice, who's the master of these compromises, managed to bring, you ready for this, Ruth Bader Ginsburg mm. on the same side as Donald Trump. If you had written a headline like that even a couple of weeks ago no one would have believed you but by carving out some unique exceptions to the travel ban for immigrants from the six countries who want to come here who have relationships with persons or entities here a job offer admission to a university a relative awaiting you those people can come in through the mm -hmm. ordinary route they still have to go through the vetting that the, that the department of homeland security puts them through but they don't suffer the automatic ban but the rest of the automatic ban that is no one from those countries coming in here the president has the power to do it and the supreme court affirmed it at least until october mm -hmm. when they hear formal oral arguments on this and then we'll write a formal lengthy opinion explaining the president's authority yeah uh, professor robbie george at princeton i don't know if you're familiar with him but he he had, a boyhood friend of mine. Yeah, so he had a great tweet this afternoon. He said these lower courts decided what they wanted to regarding Donald J. Trump's ban. The Supreme Court decided where the president has the power to create this ban. Couldn't it's a have, big difference. Couldn't have said it better because the lower court's opinions, with the exception of one of them, were all based upon the words that Mr. Donald J. Trump used when mm -hmm. he was candidate Donald J. Trump and not what he wrote when he's President Trump. What he wrote as President Trump in the second executive order the one that was ruled on today mm -hmm. was pursuant to the Constitution, pursuant to an express authority given to him by the Congress, and pursuant to another Supreme Court opinion that upheld the use of that authority when another president did it. It couldn't have been more on point if he wanted it to. What do you make of uh, 58 different lawmakers in the House now signing on a letter to Justice Ginsburg saying, based on her comments during the campaign season, not so flattering about the man who would become president, right. that she should not be able to take part in consideration of this travel ban. Well, you know, the, the Supreme Court has addressed that a long time ago. Having been a lower court judge, I know what it's like when your bosses tell you you got to get off a case because of something you said about the case before I came into your courtroom. Those mm -hmm. rules don't apply to the uh, nope. Supreme Court. So uh, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg will sit on the court. Hey, she was with everybody else today. That's true. We don't know where she will be on the substantive issue, mm -hmm. uh, but that uh, effort by those 58 people perhaps well-intended, is, is a non-starter. Yeah, only they can recuse themselves, and they rarely do. Correct. All right. There, there, there is this slight dissent, Justice Gorsuch, Justice right. Alito, and Justice Thomas, basically saying, who is the court to carve out an exception to an executive order? Yeah, they would have gotten rid of the ban, the injunction against the bans altogether. Correct. All right, Judge. See where it goes. Good to see you this morning and tonight. And tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow we'll see you too. Thank okay. you. All right, here now, David Bossy, president of Citizens United and served as Donald Trump's deputy campaign manager. And Julie Reginsky, a Democratic analyst. Both are Fox News contributors. Good to see you both. Great to see you, Thanks Shannon. All right, Julie, would you concede that this is at least a partial victory for the Trump administration? It is from a legal perspective, but I'm kind of confused as to how you're going to enact this practically. I mean, if you're somebody who wants to do this country harm, surely you can find somebody who's either traveled here before or has a family member here or can somehow establish that you have some sort of connection to the United States, in which case, obviously, you can come in. So, you know, I can't believe I'm siding with Justice Thomas, but he made a really hey, good point, hey, which, hey. Is, which is, I know, this is really <laughs> a day of strange bedfellows, but he raised a really great point, which is, how is this practically enforceable? This is this is open to all sorts of interpretation, and it's very confusing as to how this is going to be enacted for the next several months. Well, David, yeah. what we got from the justices was they said, basically, if you have some kind of connection, you're visiting a family member, you're a student accepted to a university here, you're a worker who's accepted an employment offer here, those kinds of things are okay. But when it 
comes to refugees who lack any connection to the United States for the reasons they've set out, the Corps said, the balance tips in favor of the government's compelling need to provide for the nation's security. Yeah, I think that uh, Julie's exactly right. This is why the president just a couple of weeks ago uh, criticized his own Justice Department in watering it down. He believes, and I believe, that the president should have the right to, as commander in chief to stop anyone from those countries to, from coming in. So, look, this is a great victory for the president and his administration, and let's not belittle that, but it is it would be even better if it was the original version. Well, yeah, so we do get this is 2.0. That's the one we were ruling on today. So in October, they'll take up the full consideration of it. That's right. Uh, Julie, what do you think? I mean, then we're looking at a potential 5-4 situation. We'll have to see when it's argued. Yeah, I mean, I'm certainly not a lawyer, and I can't predict what this court's going to do. I, I certainly hope they don't uphold this. I think there are people who are literally dying to get here because they want a freer, more secure life for themselves and their children. And so I would hope that we're not singling out people from some countries when, in fact, the people that hurt us on 9-11, for example, are from none of those countries. Uh, you know, it seems a very arbitrary decision to have made to select those countries. I am, I'm not for this Muslim ban, which is, in fact, what it is. But I'm even more confused by the decision today. It just well, makes no sense to me. But remember, again, these are the countries that were chosen under the Obama administration right. because of their concerns mm -hmm. about the terror traffic that was coming from for those countries. Right, David? It, it, it's exactly that. The Obama administration identified these countries as dangerous, and the president has come in after campaigning on this event, has lived up to, once again, another one of his campaign promises to, to make sure that he, as commander-in-chief, is able to protect the American people from these dangerous people. And that's what they are. They want to come here and do harm uh, to Americans here at home, not just abroad. Yeah, we're, we're not saying everybody refugees. is trying to come here. Exactly, because there are people who are fleeing persecution right. in other places, too, and coming here, as Julie said, for a chance at a better life. All right. Also breaking tonight, we want to touch on this. The Supreme Court refusing to hear a high stakes gun rights case out of California in San Diego, a sheriff's department imposing strict requirements, severely limiting who can get a concealed carry permit. Gun owners sued, claiming police were infringing on their Second Amendment rights. Lower courts ruled against the gun owners. And for now, because the Supreme Court's not going to weigh in, that decision stands. Now, Interestingly enough, you don't always get this, but when the court doesn't decide to take a case, it means there's been a vote and you didn't get to four justices who think it should be heard. Right. Sometimes people file a dissent, and there was a big one today. And this was signed on to, I believe this was uh, Justice Thomas, and also uh, Justice Gorsuch joined Gorsuch. him. I want to read part of this. He says, for those of us who work in marbled halls, guarded constantly by a vigilant and dedicated police force, the guarantees of the Second Amendment might seem antiquated and superfluous, but... The framers made a clear choice. They reserved to all Americans the right to bear arms for self-defense. Uh, these guys were not happy, David, that yeah. that case didn't get a hearing today. And, and I'm right there with them. I think that this is an important case. I think that the, also one of the things they said in their dissent was that the court seemed to be marginalizing, if you will, uh, the Second Amendment cases that have been coming up. There hasn't been, I believe it's been about a decade since we've had uh, a big Second Amendment case brought up. So I think they're frustrated and they want to make sure that the Second Amendment is protected for all Americans. And this is a this is a defeat for that. All right, final word to you, Julie. Well, I mean, there has to be limits to everything. I can't scream fire in a crowded theater, so there's a limit to the First Amendment, and there should be limits to the Second Amendment as well. I shouldn't be able to do everything I want to do. I shouldn't be able to carry a shoulder hol a holster missile. I mean, there has to be limits to what you're talking about when it comes to the Second Amendment, and I guess the court decided that there are limits, and California is enforcing them. All right. Well, by not hearing that case again, that stays in place, that lower court ruling. Uh, uh, and some of the complaint in the dissent as well was that this court has not heard a significant Second Amendment case in years. So we'll see when they do. David, Julie, good to see you both. Great to see you.